Gentlemen, ladies, boys, and girls, cats who aren't birthday hats, welcome back to the Boss Rush playthrough. This is now episode four. On the previous three episodes, we conquered Pandora, and then we started Promethea. So if you want to check those out, there should be a link to the playlist either on screen or at the end of the video, so you can check that out. Uh, you can also check my playlist anytime here on YouTube. There you go. All right, so today we are on day number four, and today we are still doing Promethea maps, and I figured we'd start things off with some Lectra City. Here on Lectra City, we've got quite a few things that we need to go farm, and I'm gonna start with Ulrismic Enforcer and One Punch. These guys are two of the lesser known enemies in the game. Uh, there's also another named enemy that's down near them, but we're gonna start with those guys first, and then we'll do Kilovolt, and I'll show you some other stuff on this map too. So let's get started. So we're gonna run all the way across the map to get to them, then I'll show you where that uh, spot is on the map. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can start this farm. Number one, there is a save station, which is located right here on the map, or, and more closely located to them, there is a save station over this way, and I'll show you where that's at, because that's actually the fast one. You can basically ignore all these enemies and just run down here. But the other one, I feel like it's probably even better. So from this one, you just come down through here, you go through the underground, and here's Ulrus Enforcer located underground. Right there is where Ulrus Enforcer will spawn. All right, 0 for 1 on Ulrus Enforcer, And then just around the corner from Ulrus Enforcer, in this little cubby hole over here, there's all these switches. So if you pull the lever and then pull the lever again, and spin the wheel all right first run on one punch we got one of his two drops the sleeping giant which is actually a highly underrated weapon so get yourself a adapting sleeping giant if you do farm for that it does more damage than the regular sleeping giant all right so here is the closer save station like i was telling you guys about it's located right here on the map so from here you go down the steps around the corner and then you'll be down in the underground area where you can fight one punch in this little zone here and then Ulrus Mech Enforcer in his little cave spot right there. All right, so let's save and quit and try again. Where can you farm this pistol from DLC 3? Lazodactyl. Got a video guide on it if you want. There's the recharger. Nice, done with that. Hey, did we get the one pump? One pump chump. I really wish the one pump chump were a little bit better in uh, mayhem modes. It just feels pretty weak. You can build around it. And with the revolter, hell, who knows? Maybe you can make something work with it. Because it's a fun gun. It pales in comparison to like the Hellwalker, for example. That just leaves the Masterworks crossbow. There we go, Masterworks crossbow. Woohoo! This gun, in case you've never used this thing before, shoots out darts, and they have like a little bit of a drop off to them. Let's see if we can actually hit somebody with this. Nope. No. Nope. Huh. Yeah, they're they're really hard to aim, by the way. Nope. Nope. Anyhow, this gun's not for mayhem. Long story short, this gun's not designed for mayhem. We're just gonna leave that here on the floor. Now we're ready to go farm Tumor Head. Now Tumor Head is also in that same underground area. The uh, previous save station I showed you will actually be a little bit quicker for Tumor Head, but I'll go ahead and uh, run you across so you guys can see. So again, this save station right here on your map is gonna be the closest for Tumor Head because what we're gonna do, we're gonna run down here, drop, and then go into the under underground area and double back for this one. And then when we drop down here, you're just gonna double back and go back through the underground area. Now to get Tumor Head to spawn, you do need to do the Proof of Wife side quest here in Lecture City. So keep that in mind. And then anytime after that, you can come through here. There's Tumor Head. Tumor Head will always spawn out of this door down here in the underground, this door right here. And again, like I said, you have to do the Proof of Wife mission in order for them to spawn. All right, first kill on Tumor Head, we got nothing. All right, here we go, we got the Rocketeer. There we go, Krakatoa. All right, back-to-back -back runs, we got all the drops, sweet. So that's it for that. So up next, we're going to kill a volt. Now, a couple things to note. If for whatever reason you want the nine volt on Mayhem 6 and above, it shares the loot pool with the Monarch. So the drop rate for the nine volt on Mayhem 6 and above is 13.5% and the Monarch is 16.5%, which combined makes 30%. Uh, but on normal mode, if you're farming for the nine volt and you can't get the Monarch, and the 9 volt is a 30% drop chance. So here is your save station for farming kilovolt located all the way at the back of your map right here by these vendors. Now, if you're on console, there's a couple things that you should know about this farm. If you're on console and your load times suck, you can actually down yourself after this fight. It'll respawn you up top and then it'll restart uh, kilovolt's fight. 
All right, run number one, we got nothing. There is also a chest over here. And like I was saying, if you're on console and you want to just reset the farm without save quitting, which I know it takes a little bit of time, then you can just down yourself in his arena. Oh, there we go. All right, so we down ourselves in the arena, tap out. As you see, after killing ourselves and dropping back in, Loot's still on the ground. There's Kilovolt. But use radiation, by the way. If, you, uh, if you've if you never farmed Kilovolt before, Kilovolt does resist shock. So make sure you use radiation or fire. So there you have it. That's how you can quickly reset Kilovolt if you're on console. Just a little Phoenix University lesson for you guys there. Another little tip for you guys. When you're farming Kilovolt and you don't want him to teleport, when he comes out of his little stupid dance thing, if you stay really close to him, then he won't teleport. All right, what we got? Hey, all right, we got the 9 volt. So now we can just focus on... The monarch. Shit. Die. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Monarch. Unless he faked me out and dropped me a dictator. He's done that to me before. Monarch. Non-elemental times four. Terrible anointment. That's about right. That's about what I expect out of a monarch. Now, to get to Judge Hightower, you can use the same save point that you used for Kilovolt if you want, but there's a better one. Basically, right over here by Moxie's place. There's a save station right here. It's located here on your map. From here, all you got to do to get to Hightowers is you run past all these guys, go up these stairs, and then you dip into this little cave right here. And back here in the back, you will fight some Judge Hightower goons. If you kill these first uh, Hightower crew members, that will trigger Hightower to come out of his door. Then he jumps all the way over here to you. And then you just melt his ass down, hopefully. There we go. And that's nothing on run number one. Now, in order to complete this crew challenge, you do need to kill all of his crew. There you go. Had I not already completed that, that would have completed the crew challenge for us. All right, there we go. We got the carrier, optimized carrier at that. So optimized, guys. <laughs> it's such a bad gun. Unfortunately, it used to be good before Mayhem 2.0, and then it went way downhill way fast. We finally get it. We finally got it. All right, let's put this thing on. Okay, let's die. Man, this thing has a little bit too much kick, I think, too. Yeah, this thing is tickle torturing this guy. He's like, that's cute, bro. Okay, so now we need to go to Wick and Warty. All right, so we're going to head over to this spot on the map to farm Wick and Morty. Uh, there is a save station around the corner from them, but it doesn't work for whatever reason. So we will be starting our farms from over here. Let's go. All right, and here's Wick and Warty. Again, like I said, they're right here on the map. They always spawn in in this spot. They do teleport around a bunch, and it's annoying as hell. So try and kill them before they can start teleporting. And as you see on run number one, we got the Feebert, and this one's a redundant one. All right, what we got here? Triple A. All right, there you go. Oh, there we go. And there's our Quasar. Sweet. We actually killed him with the fever. <laughs> that just leaves the black hole shield. There we go, black hole shield. We are done. That's everything on Lectra City. So on to the next Promethea map. All right, Dinklebot will always spawn out of this garbage pile right here on the map, Skywell 27. So starting from the starting save or the starting fast travel station, you just run down the hill. Dinklebot will be right here. Dinklebot spawns every time and Dinklebot has a 100% drop rate on the Ludogram. Now the Ludogram is something you take to Crazy Earls. And when you get to Crazy Earls, you turn that in for a chance, a 50% chance at either a Lucian's Call or a Butcher. It benefits you to come over here and farm Dinklebot like five, 10, 15 times, gather up a bunch of Ludograms and then take them all to Crazy Earls, turn them all in at once, and you can maybe get five, six Butchers, maybe a few uh, Lucian's Calls as well, and then maybe you'll get a good one out of that. All right, so we're about to go farm Handsome Jackie, as you can see on the screen there, Handsome Jackie drops the Nimble Jack and the Handsome Jack Hammer. To farm Handsome Jackie, you do need to go underground at Skywell 27, so you have to take the elevator down you're going to come to this location on the map and from here you're going to go out the door drop down to this lower level and inside this cave is handsome jackie like i said you go through this door and after you go through the door all you got to do is just drop down over this ledge be careful not to fall off the map and then go into this cave handsome jackie will spawn here something you need to know about handsome jackie um every once in a while she will attempt to take this thing out of her pocket and throw it do not let her do that punch her if you have to That'll, uh, that'll stagger her and ruin her animation so that she can't throw that thing. Because when she throws that, she gives herself this huge shield. And when she gets that, it is a pain in the ass to deal with. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't mind just having a chest. All right, what we got? We got the Jackhammer. Thank you, Handsome Jackie. So the Jackhammer is a Hyperion that acts kind of like a TD or you throw reload it. Interesting gun. 
There we go, Nimble Jack. So the Nimble Jack, you have to jump and shoot enemies to do more damage. Pretty cool. Not great for melee mode though. So it's a 30% chance to get something from Katagawa Ball. 16.5% of that chance goes to the multi-tap and then 13.5% chance goes to the Brainstormer. Now, if you don't have Mayhem 6 on, if you're playing on Mayhem 5 or lower, then the Brainstormer is a 30% chance to drop because it'll be the only thing in this loot pool at that point. All right, and to farm Katagawa Ball, you want to come to this save station, which is located in, again, we're going to be underground here. And we're going to come to this spot right here. You'll see the machines right beside of it. And we just got to drop down the elevator shaft across the hallway drop down the elevator shaft and katagawa ball will spawn right here so you want to bring something that's uh, good corrosive damage to take care of the armor bar and then you want something with shock damage to take care of the other if you're, if you're like me and you're using a revolter shield that'll tear him up no matter what weapons you're using all right run number one we got a world drop we haven't gotten that many world drops today haven't got that many world drops today Oh, damn. We got some drops there. Got our Lyuda. Annex Lyuda. Got a Brainstormer that's in his loot pool. And then there's... Shouldn't have said anything about not getting world drops. Tidal Wave. <laughs> that can stay there. All right. But yeah, we got the Brainstormer. This one's a consecutive hits Brainstormer at that. All right. So we got a Recursion. We got a Red Fang. We got the Multi-Tap. Woohoo! Multi-tap is a very, very, very good gun. If you saw my Atlas Zane playthrough, then you know that I use basically this to kill Hemavorus. But that's it. That's all we needed from this guy anyhow. So there we go. We got both of the drops. So here's the fun part about this farm. Each thing is listed as a 2.5% drop chance. They're all basically split between all of these guys. Um, now there's certain ones of these items that only drop from the blue power troopers, certain ones that only drop from the yellow one, et cetera, et cetera. But essentially you've got a 15% chance to get something on every single run. And each one of these guys can drop almost all of these things. So it's not as bad as the 2.5% sounds like, okay? And uh, I know that's a wall of text on the screen. I did shrink it down a little bit from the other day, but these guys have eight drops. So it is going to take up some space, unfortunately. All right. So the quickest way to get to the power troopers now, obviously you can go all the way around the map and go up here to them if you want. But when you first spawn in, if you come over to the left, like I've done, so the door came over there and you come over to this beam right here, you can jump and mantle that and then go up this rail that saves you from having to go all the way around to get to these guys. And then when you come over here, they will drop in from up there. So let's kill. And almost every single time you kill all these guys, you're pretty much guaranteed to see a legendary drop. A lot of the time you're gonna see multiple legendaries per run. This time we only got one naturally since I was saying that, but we did get the Star Helix. Star Helix is actually still a decent gun. A lot of people don't realize that this gun's still not bad. You just have to find the right range to use it from. So as you can see, the uh, the Star Helix is not bad. Uh, again, you do need to find the range so you get all those projectiles coming back and hitting the enemy at the at the same time. So it's about right there for me. And we got the Generator Transfusion Tracker Grenade this time. Not a good grenade. All right, on this run, we got the Thunderball Fist and the Thunderball Fist. So as you can see, multiple drops of the same item can occur from these Power Troopers. All right, this time we got the Hyper Focus and the Hyper Focus. All right, so again, another double drop from these guys. Oh, yeah, let's get all the drops right here, guys. Come on, drop everything. You know you want to. All right, what we got? Another Hyper Focus, uh, another Thunderball Fist, and we got the Nova Burner, though. Sweet. Thanks, buddy. All right, what we got? Hey, we finally got the Destructo Spinner and another Star Helix. Sweet. Helix. Ah, the Surge, finally. Finally the Surge. How about a Vanquisher, guys? Drop me a Vanquisher. Come on, dude. You're the last one. I'm going to vanquish you for a Vanquisher, please. Son of a bitch. That's all we got left is the Vanquisher now. There's the Surge. Please, please, please. Yes, Vanquisher, we're done. Another Destructive Spinner. All right, cool. All right, so now that we're done with that, let's move on. We can now go to Katagawa Jr. So to get to Katagawa Jr., we just got to run all the way through Atlas HQ. You have to fight him during the story mode, so you should know where he's at. If you are fighting Katagawa Jr. on Mayhem 6 or above, you get a chance at the Sandhawk Sniper Rifle, which, in case you didn't see, I made a video in the This Gun Frickin' Rock series the other day about the Sandhawks. Check that out if you want. Now, the uh, this is interesting. So the Firestorm is only a 5% from Katagawa, but you can also get it from Red Jabber. Actually, no, no, wait, 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 wait. It's 4.5%, my bad, 
4.5% from Katagawa Jr. <clears throat> and it's 5% uh, from Red Jabber. Now the Storm is 10% from Red Jabber and 9% from Katagawa Jr. on Mayhem 6 and above. As you see, you basically instantly kill Katagawa with some good shock damage. You can also hit this thing and sometimes that'll instantly kill him, just so you know. All right, run number one, we got a world drop. And then also remember that Katagawa has some red chests in here. There's one here and then there's one back there. Hey, there's the storm. All right, storm's done. Yo, there we go. We got our Sandhawk. Sweet. Now the Firestorm, here's what I'm going to say. Even though Katagawa Jr. can drop the Firestorm, its dedicated drop is actually Red Jabber. So we're going to farm that from Red Jabber. Yeah, I know I could kill him faster with other stuff. Yeah, they removed the Quadramizer from him. Yeah. Not really sure why, because his attack is the Quadramizer attack. You would think that they'd be like, all right, well, let's leave that in here. All right, first run, we got a recursion. That's not what we wanted. There we go. We got the good juju. Thank God we finally got that done. It'd be cool if you can drop the Duke at the same time. I don't think you can drop both at the on the same roll. Run seven for the good juju. That was a 10% drop chance for that. Now it just leaves the Duke. Come on, Duke. Come on, Duke. You know you want to duke it. Drop me the duke. Yes! Woo! Oh my god. Never been so excited to see that gun in my life, man. <laughs> We're done. I think that was actually run nine. I think I forgot to update the run counter. I think that was run number nine for that one. But there you go. There's the duke. All right. So here's the uh, echelon roadmap. And at the very end of this map, all the way at the very end, you get to fight Sumo. When you're doing the Ava murder mysteries, you'll have no choice but to fight this guy. Uh, he is located right here on the map. And he always spawns out of this door. Now, the very first time you come here, after you kill him and you complete the uh, the story by running through those doors if you go all the way to the end of that area back there and then come back out sumo will respawn it only seems to work on that very first attempt though so keep that in mind all right run number one and we got a duke <laughs> which we were just farming the rampager forever for so thank you for that there's a save station just up those stairs like right here so you will save and quit and when you respawn you'll be right there so it makes this a really fast easy farm again 30% chance to get the revolter. It's extremely easy to farm. Come on, baby. There we go. Ooh, we got a double vagabond on this one. All right. So that is that for that farm. It did take a little bit longer than what I'm used to on the revolter farm, but there you go. Okay, so here we are in Athenus. Athenus, we have three named enemies that we need to farm. First one's gonna be Chupacabra, who's over there. Then we got Private Beans, who's over there. And then we got Trot, who's over there. This is going to be our first save station. We're gonna use this for both Chupacabra and for Private Beans. So that is located right here, basically right dead square in the middle of the map. All right, so for Chupacabra, you don't need any missions. You don't need anything. This is one of the Hammerlock Hunt enemies. You just run over here and you're going to go into this little cubby hole and there is Chupacabra. Chupacabra can steal your health. So be careful when you uh, come over to kill this thing. We got nothing on run number one. So we're going to try, try again. This is uh, the location on the map for Chupacabra in case you did not know. There we go. Nagata. All right. Run number three. Chupa's organ. Sweet. We're done with that farm. All right, so now private beans time. So again, starting from the same save point. To get the beans, you do need to do a side quest to get beans called Invasion of Privacy. This is given to you by Ava, either on Sanctuary or wherever you'd run into her. And then along the way, you get to hear some awesome and hilarious dialogue from Private Beans, who is one of my favorite characters in any Borderlands game, just maybe slightly behind Handsome Jack. Believe it or not, that's how much I love Private Beans. Now, the fastest way to farm Private Beans, after you beat him the first time, you turn in the stuff to Ava and Sanctuary, you do have to come back to Athena's. So again, starting from the save point right in the middle of Athena's, the fastest way to farm him is going to be to parkour these rocks right here and then you're going to run over to these rocks you're going to parkour up these and over this rail and through the gate that's going to save you a probably a good five seconds of running right there just a little speedy little pro tip there for you and then beans will always spawn up here and then beans will always spawn right here i just kicked a barrel and killed myself if you wonder why that was hilarious all right so first run wester gun like i said this is a near 100 percent drop chance on mayhem 10 and mayhem 11. i have had runs where i haven't gotten it before so if i had to guess i'd say it's probably a 90 percent drop chance it's ridiculously high no matter what it is and i think wester gun is on its own drop rate independent of the front loader and the trevenator we're gonna find out here in a minute 
All right, run number two, and we got the Trevenator and the Western Gun. So yeah, as you can see, the Western Gun is, is it has its own drop rate on beans, independent from the Trevenator and the front loader drops. But as you can see, the Trevenator, this gun is amazing. If you've never used this, this is actually a really, really good roll on this one too. Action skill and splash damage. Western Gun, not great. Don't don't use the Western Gun. On <laughs> twenty one, what do we got? Western Gun. Hey, we got the front loader. Hot damn. Woo. Done with that. All right. Come talk to K6 and then proceed to touch his booty. I'm fine with that. As long as you let me know you're going to do it and don't just surprise me because I might turn around and punch a guy that grabs him bullet without asking. All right. Run number one on Captain Tron. In, in case you did not know, for some reason, if you have no idea where Captain Tron Right here at the very end of the map, you do have to fight Tront when you do the story. So if somehow you didn't know where Tront's at, now you do. All right, there's our Chaos and Dake, decaying barking Chaos. And I think barking is uh, crit damage, right? Again, that's a Mayhem 6 and above exclusive. You have to be on Mayhem 6 or higher. Uh, technically, at this point, I could switch my game to Mayhem 4 and have a higher chance of getting it. I think it's like a 30% drop chance to get it if I do that. Who wants to do that? That's all forget to switch it back. There it is, tank man shield. All right. And we also got a wood blocker, a rerouter, and a conference call since world drops are so hard to come by. And that's where we're going to wrap it up for the day. All right. So when we come back tomorrow, we're going to jump into Eden 6. That's probably going to take the entire episode. If you want to, you can come watch live Monday through Friday over twitch.tv slash killer six. Link is in the description down below. You can click on that anytime. Come check this out. Twitch is free. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it anywhere. You don't have to have an app. You can watch it in a browser doesn't cost you anything if you want to check it out thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this episode make sure you hit the like button hit subscribe tap the bell icon for more and i will see you guys in the next one y'all have a great day